Right, hello everyone, welcome back to Asian and Gash, which is a channel dedicated to Age Sigma, and in this video we have got, of course, more news for Warhammer Age of Sigma. And in this article, it looks like it's diving back into the Dominion box set, and I believe they said they're going to have a look at the uh, a few wizards from that box set. So I haven't read through these articles I, like I normally do, I don't read through them, so you get my pure reaction as I review this for the first time. And let me know your thoughts and everything that we're going to read through here in the comments or the chat of this video. So this is quite exciting as I think the wizards for either side are pretty cool. So let's see what we're going to get. So it says, who's the stronger wizard in Dominion? Sigma's Law Seeker and the Cruel Boy's Bog Shaman face off. I mean, it's got to be the Bog Shaman, clearly. I, I don't really know what else, who else could be the winner out of that. So... It says, we've had a look at the troops in the Dominion, but some of the best models in the box are undoubtedly the two wizards. They deserve their time to shine. So today we're pitting the knight um, Arcanum, Arcanum I believe it was called, yep, and then the Swamp Caller Shaman against each other across a range of categories to see how they stack up. So that'd be interesting to see how they compare this because they're not going to make either one sound like they're worse than the other. So let's see. Um, I really like her. I think she's pretty cool. Uh, I would give her the mask. So I think that looks awesome, but that's a pretty cool head as well. And then, yeah, the, do you need to know anything else apart from the cool boy shaman? It looks awesome as expected. So we then say start. Okay. That's how this is going to be rated. Okay, so style points. Um, so we've got an edge winner, which is the Knight Arcanum. So both of these models look awesome, but the incredible, creepy, mouthless white mask of the Knight Arcanum makes them immediately recognisable and intimidating. I mean, is that not intimidating? More than the mask, but I do like the mask, so I won't say so much. I just wish she didn't have that massive like, headpiece. I think she would look better, but oh well. Um, it says they've also got long um, flowing sleeves, and an unusual tall uh, cow, I presume that's what that is. Yeah, I don't like that. Um, around the back of their neck. So even if you choose the um, unhelmeted option, their distinctive silhouette still sets them apart from their peers. Um, yeah, I think the um, the cruel boy has better style, but that, that's me. So let me know your guys' thoughts on backstory. Okay, so we can see clearly how this is all going to be judged. Okay, so it's not actually going to be irrelevant for the tabletop at all but let me know your thoughts on how they've reviewed it i can kind of feel like how this article's going hopefully we'll get some rules at the bottom or hopefully straight away but it says backstory so it's a tie so knights arcanum belong to the clad uh, so the clanstein order of the valdicta temple they seek uh, proscribed knowledge that they are forbidden from uh, forgetting using Mnemonic, uh, Hyacian gemstones to allow near perfect recall. Nothing good ever comes for free though, as the wielder is nearly always driven mad. So that's just a little bit of law, obviously, about these people, and they have to do that because they've now got a few, from Stormcast having no wizards to a few wizards now, they have to try and make them different. So, yep, that's fair enough. Um, then we're going on to the Swamp Caller Shaman. So, on the other hand, earned their. Uh, Monic Monica, not by calling out the names of swamps or calling out when they're hanging around in swamps or even calling out fun facts about swamps to passers by. Rather, they call the swamps to them, tainting the land with their foul um, concoctions and until the ground becomes squelch and muck. It just reminds me of Nurgle, really, but just about the, the chaos element and the disease. Uh, but that plays a big part in swamps, so. But that's cool anyway, so it relies on the power of the swamp, so you know, uses not really the realms, but like the environment against its enemies. Um, and they've got a magical uh, potency, so the winner is the Swamp Caller Shaman. So a Knight Encanter, uh, not Encanter, that's the other one, the Knight Arcanum can harness the power of nearby Thunderstrike units to attack enemies both near and far, inflicting mortal wounds with a bolt of holy lightning. So the first one it says is, so now some rules, which is nice. Uh, Blaze of the Heavens. So, Blaze of the Heavens is a spell that has a casting value of 7 and a range of 18. If successfully cast, pick one enemy unit within range and visible to the caster. 
That unit suffers D3 mortal wounds. Add 2 to the range of the spell for each other friendly Stormcast Eternal Spawn Strike unit, wholly within uh, 12 inches of the caster. I mean, D3 mortal wounds isn't bad. You know, it, it's a thing, but it's not the best spell. And I was thinking for each unit nearby, maybe that's like an extra mortal wound at a war. This could be pretty, you know, punchy. Um, but it's just that extra 2 inches to the range but you know isn't you know, better than nothing but yeah that doesn't sound really blazing just a light touch of the heavens i think i would i would call that but if that's like the spell on her war scroll presumably some spells on wizard war scrolls are terrible like um a couple of the ostrich bone reaper characters the bone sh uh was he shaper and soul reaper have got not very good spells in their rules so you know just just bear that in mind that it could be worse uh but the next thing it says is while that's pretty cool, it's not quite as powerful as the Swamp Caller's Magic, whose Warscroll spell grants a boon to every friendly Cruel Boys or unit on the battlefield, uh, sorry, on the field, uh, while hindering all others. So, Summon Boggy Mist. Summon Boggy Mist is a cast and value of 7. It's successfully cast until your next hero phase. Add 1 to the charge rolls for friendly Cruel Boy or units on the battlefield and subtract 1 from the charge rolls for other units on the battlefield. That's really cool. I like that spell. And it's just, there's no range in it. You just fucking do it so you can be at the back of the board where the enemy can't unbind you most armies won't be able to unbind you um and just add one to charge yeah that's really cool i mean we don't know their rules if they're already going to have really good bonuses to charge anyway but even if that's the case you can never have too many bonuses to charge you know that's great um or they might not have really any bonuses and in that case and this is essential so yeah that's nice uh because a lot of people who are going to get into these armies are going to try and get the dominion box set which means you want the units from that Dominion box set to be useful. So it's nice to see that the um, Shaman is for sure. So, what do we? It says, This spell might not seem all that powerful at first glance. I think it's pretty damn powerful. But it says, But such a wide range of effect can make all the difference in tight games. You'll find yourself using it all the time. The Nani Shaman can also brew up a whole host of poisons and elixirs to help their cruel boys pals in battle they're the ultimate team player so that's cool as well so it then goes on to say the best sidekick which is a uh, winner by default which is the pot girl. i mean she doesn't even have a sidekick the um arcanum lady the lord arcanum i think she was called um so you know obviously, obviously she's lost but the pot girl, i think would win against most other um sidekicks for sure definitely beats a griffhound so it says the Swamp Callers are often accompanied by a cranky pot stirring grunt who carries all their stuff and even stabs anyone careless enough to get too close. What a lad. Yeah, he, he's great. Amazing. And you get him in the box. So, you know, clearly the hero of all other models in this box set. It then says the oh so mistress and aloof knight Arcanum prefers to work alone. So don't get a single hanger on. Even worse is that this means that they don't have anyone to help mix their potions thanks to their little buddy the swamp caller shaman have access to a wide range of deadly potions and elixirs okay so this is interesting this is a lot of text so bear with me it says in your hero phase if this unit is more than three inches away from all enemy units instead of attempting to cast any spells with this unit you can say that they are brewing either a poison or an elixir if you do so, pick one friendly cool boys oryx unit, hold it within 12 inches of this unit, and more than 3 inches away from all enemy units, and that has at least one model within 3 inches of this unit to begin that poison or elixir. A unit that has been given a poison or elixir cannot be given another poison elixir on the same hero phase. Okay, so what it actually does is if that unit is given a poison until your next hero phase when you use the Venom Encrusted Weapons Allegiance ability for that unit, which I believe we haven't seen yet, maybe I can't remember, but I don't think we've seen that yet, mortal wounds are caused on an unmodified um, roll of 5 plus instead of 6. If that unit is given an elixir, add one to the save rolls for that unit. So unit save okay, that's really good. So you're going to be taking this guy as long as he's not like silly in points or something. So that pot grot certainly does uh, add a lot to the uh, table pot from just style, I think. Um, so with that, I'm just trying to think how their allegiance ability works and the venom encrusted weapons because I don't think they've told us. So maybe I think the army does more wound on a six to hit. 
um, which is pretty cool. I mean, it doesn't mention hits, but that's often when the mortal wounds are done. And if that is the case, that's really, really good. Or maybe it's only certain units that do. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. There's no point speculating too much, but that sounds pretty damn good. Um, as it says, uh, as anyone who gets hit with those improved venom encrusted weapons will uh, realize it pays to bring along a sorcerer psychic for sure. Hopefully it's the same points, I presume, because I, I reckon he comes together because oh, because he's a psychic. Um, what I will say is the add one to save rolls is really good though, because this army is probably not going to have great saves despite their lovely shields. So making a save from a five up to four up as an example, or maybe your big boss has got a four up save, maybe even a three up save, potentially, you know, some characters in this army, maybe a uh, push, and you can make it a two up save or a three up save, you know, so that's definitely got use. And then we've got the battle uh, prowess. So the winner is an Arcanum. So it's no surprise that the Stormcast Eternals have the advantage here, as even the wizards among Sigma's champions are potent warriors. With the same number of wounds for each of the wizards in the Dominion box, they both weigh in at six. So that's pretty solid. But a better save of a three plus versus a five plus here. So like the Shaman's only got five plus. And two extra points of bravery, a knight encounter, uh, arcanum even. Yep, just don't make it start off an A. Would make my life a lot easier. Is likely to stick around longer than a swamp crawler uh, shaman. Yeah, that's true. And he's going to be fairly close, I reckon, to the action thing of the shaman, like because he wants to put that buff on, but he can't be too close, obviously, because he's going to put it on a unit that's not in combat. So. Um, oh, and by the way, loads of new scenery here. We have like a cool looking statue. We've got this thing that we saw before, like that very like dome looking thing. Looks like there's going to be more scenery here and there. I'm just telling my past self this because I forgot. Anyway, back to the video. <laughs> I mean, that's good. Uh, more survivable. The Shaman definitely adds a hell of a lot more synergy to the army, it would look. Um, it says the real kicker, however, is the fact that the Knight um, Arcanum are anathemia? Something like that. Athenia, I can't say it. it. Basically, very connected to endless spells. Um, they use their arcane knowledge to form a null zone around themselves. That's crucial for protecting their fellow Stormcast Eternals. Okay, so we've got Indomitable Law Seeker. So, predatory endless spells cannot pass across this unit or finish a move within three inches of this unit. Okay, so that actually adds quite a bit of synergy to the army, especially how endless spells are going to become a lot more usable on the table. Uh, with the changes that we covered in yesterday's video, so you can go check that out if you'd like to. But Ender Spells just got twice as good, basically. So this is going to be this should be useful because you use it to obviously protect her, but other units as well. If you have like amongst uh, your units and stuff, it says if you read yesterday's article, you'll know that Protean Spells are even more powerful than the new addition of One Mood Sigma. So this buff is a big deal. Yep, just like I was saying. It says, as it turns out, uh, each of these wizards has their own advantages that work well with their respective armies. Both the Knight Arcanum and the Swamp Caller Shaman are solid choices, but, they work, but they're well matched against each other. If you get the Dominion launch box, you won't have to decide which you prefer at all. They're both included. And then it says, check back tomorrow to learn more about the Dawnbringer Crusade. So that'd be interesting and get a sneak peek of even more upcoming models. Ooh, so more models coming out. And then it says, if you want to make sure you never miss an update, sign up to the newsletter, blah, 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 you can do that. Um, so summary of this, uh, I thought this was quite good. I was, I was a little bit like, I thought, you know, I really like the law and stuff, but when they go, oh, which is better? And then it's just like, just comparison with the, how the model looks and the law. It's, like, it's not really what we're after. Um, so I was happy, like, when, well, that was nice, but I was happy when we got to here and we started reading some rules. And I think, that's cool to know that these characters are going to bring useful uh, abilities, really, to either army. I particularly like the uh, Shaman, I think, uh, has got the best overall. But what do you guys think? Let me know that down below in the comments, like I said before. Um, it's nice how we saw, like, two units here compared next to each other rather than just, like, one. I uh, definitely think that's cool. And because we haven't got the points, it means that we can... Again, it's nice to have the points, so we know if it's worth taking or not. But because we haven't got the points, we can look at it in, a, like, a a non like objective way of going like oh well there's too many points you know we're gonna take it so just like you know you're not giving the uh you're not putting as much thought into thinking how can this guy be useful because you think with the points are no going to pay for it anyway but they might not be too expensive in points they might be perfectly fine they may even be under who knows for sure 
Um, so yeah, with that, let me know your thoughts down below. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me three massive favours. Smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, smash the bell notification. If you do that, you know, I'll love you forever. That's basically as simple as it gets. By liking the channel, it means that you're going to get more of this sort of content on news, on Stormcast, on the Cruel Boys. And it helps out YouTube because it says to YouTube that people are enjoying this video. So hopefully we'll recommend this video to people and they will enjoy it. So make sure you like the video by subscribing to the channel. That's how the channel grows at the end of the day. And I know a lot of you people have been doing that lately. So it's absolutely amazing, but still only one fifth of you guys actually subscribe to the channel. So if you all did it, I mean, the channel will be five times size, which would be unbelievably great, right? So that'd be amazing. And then by pressing the bell notification means you'll never miss one of my future videos if you enjoyed any of my series or if you're liking all this news that I am covering. And like I say, if you've got any of your own thoughts, let it put, um, put it down in the comments down below. And then also, if you do think you know someone who enjoyed this video, make sure you share it with them. And if you would like to join the Age of Nagash community, click the link to my Discord in the description of this video. It will take you to my Discord, where there's a great community. There's about 270 of us now, I think. And um, there's loads of conversation, always about the news um, that's coming out, especially there's so much news at the moment, and also about existing armies, tactics, uh, models, painting, loads of things to enjoy and get involved with. So join the Discord for sure. And um, what I'd like to say as well is if you'd like to support the channel that step further, I have actually got a membership and a Patreon. So what does that mean? If you click the join button next to the subscribe button, it'll allow you to become a member here in Asian Gash where you can give anything from just one pound a month, go straight towards the channel, keeps it going, or I have got a link to my Patreon on the top of the description down below. You can click that link, take it to my Patreon where you can give anything just one dollar a month. And because of these amazing people you can see on the screen now, I'm able to keep this up. So I always say, YouTube, you know, for me, it's not profitable or anything like that. If it was a business, I'd be making a loss every month. But what these people show me is that the amount of um, uh, appreciation they have for my content allows me to justify all the time, resources and money I put into this. So they are the people and they are the reason why you're watching me talk now. So my biggest vampire lord on Zombie Dragon, I say biggest and the only one, so you know, it can be Prince of Hordre, let's say, is going to be Philco. So Philco is my top supporter. He's been supporting me for quite a while and he's been um, a vampire lord on Zombie Dragon for a little while now as well. So that massively makes a difference. Thank you so much for your continued support there. Um, really, really is generous of you. And then we've got my Morgas, who is Bleed Red. So thank you so much for supporting me as a Morgas for a long time, mate. And then my vampires, who are Mir, Stents, Ras321, David A., Dragoon T, Dragoon Itty, God's sake, I, I have to learn how to say that. But anyway, so we, then we've got Ronnie H, Darren L, Spare Bear, Christopher H, North Drop, Nathan F, Andrew G, and Ben C, and Wiggy Hooty, I believe it was pronounced. So thank you all to my vampires. I know some of you are new, so thank you so much for deciding to uh, join support. And some of you have been supporting me for a long time now. So thank you for being the core of the support for the channel. And then my Necromancers, who is Jack L, Radiation Riley, AW77. Dice Sagas, Wolf Nick, Michael W, Cranky Wombat, Madcap, Christopher C, Krista F, James S, Thomas B, Steve T, James T, Patrick F, JJ, R Christopher, and Seption. Thank you all so much for deciding to make a huge difference and allowing the channel to keep going to help me help other people get into Age of Sigma and continue their Age of Sigma journey at the end of the day. It only just basically spreads the community that we all love and enjoy. And if you'd like to become one of these amazing people, like I say, click the join button and subscribe button. It'd be amazing if you could or click the link to my Patreon down below. And if you can't do any of that, no worries at all, but all I ask if you do enjoy the video, smash the like, smash the subscribe, smash the bell notification. Free easy clicks, absolutely free to do so, would mean the world to me. But more than anything else, I'm just glad that you came and checked out this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Remember until next time to stay safe, stay hygienic, make sure you wear a mask, and for God's sake, wash your hands. So by the time you use the uh, Shaman and you use the um, Lord Arcanum, on your tabletop, you'll roll better with them if you've got clean hands. That's what I've been told. But then, more importantly than any of that, it's remember until next time that Nagash is all, and all is one in Nagash.